hello this is Jilly from Jilly's Creative Corner um, today I'm going to show you how to make this um, little clutch bag uh, it's not my design um, it's from Sam at Mixed Up Crafts she does some amazing projects but I think this project shows our um, free papers that Stamping Up are doing at the moment um, with our celebration so this uses a whole sheet of 12 by 12 pattern paper and then uh, coordinating with the colours from the paper um, I've made this uh, bow for the front um, and then it opens up and you get quite a lot in it um, it's quite roomy inside um, you wouldn't put anything too heavy in it because it is um, paper as opposed to cardstock um, but you could you can get quite a quite a lot in there I've actually just popped my stamping mist um, spray in there so you can see how tall of an item you can get in there but you could put some cosmetics or some sweets or some um, candles um, some beautiful melts um, all sorts of uh, you can put all sorts of things in here um, it's a really nice size uh, for every 45 pounds you spend this is one of the products that you can uh, choose to get for free so I'll just show you it's double-sided paper so this is the one that I used for um, my bag so you use a full sheet of um, tw the 12 by 12 and then what I did was where well, you see these cut marks here this is where I cut my uh, the little leaves and the flower from so you don't need stamps or ink for this um, project you can make the whole thing out of just um, card card stock and pattern paper and obviously your uh, your glues So this is the one I used for my little clutch bag and then the opposite side is these lovely little pink flowers so you get a different design inside and it all coordinates with, with the colours on the outside. So you get two sheets of that and then you get two sheets of this one. And on the back of this one is um, playing with the stripes. You get two sheets of this one and then you get green uh, little stripes and dots. That's your second sheet of that one. And you get two sheets of this one. This has got more of a pink uh, background this is a petal pink background and on the other side is lovely little uh, knight of navy background with white and um, seaside spray actually all the coordinating cardstock um, that stamping up coordinate with this uh, they write on the back so you get two of those and then you get two of these these have been amazing because what I did was so that I didn't need to ink anything this little um, one here this little circle here I got my um, one and a half inch circle punch and I punched out from from these because you get two you've got lots of scope to be able to use these on other projects um, so you can see where I've been punching out my my colours. I guess if you've got um, if you don't have a one and a half inch punch, then um, a one and a half inch circle framelit would do exactly the same job. You would just have to cut the circle out to put it through your um, cutting machine. But it's to have a punch right by you. It's so so much easier. And then you've got two of these, which is some very big, um, bigger flowers. So you could actually cut these flowers out 
and use them you know on another card if you didn't want to use the whole piece of DSP um, like that you could that's a beautiful flower that you could just cut out the whole thing um, and then there is one more um, sheet that we are actually going to be using today which is this one um, I love the colors on there the deep and rich so I used this one because I cut out some flowers so this is going to be my flower so I cut out the little flower and then what I did was I cut out these leaves now you're not going to see that on there because what you do is this will pop it behind there with glue dots so that you can only see the bits that you want to see so you could have it like like that would I'll put it, I'll put it on properly later so you can still use these leaves even though they've got these odd shapes and different colors on the bottom because you're just going to hide it behind the flower so to get started you need one sheet of 12 inches by 12 inches of pattern paper 12 inches by 12 inches you need one piece of coordinating um, cardstock. Uh, this one is petal pink, so it's going to pick up um, these flowers here, and that's going to be eight inches by eight inches. And you're going to score that every quarter of an inch. So we'll I'll do that with you um, later on but you score it every quarter of an inch, that piece there. Then you need a piece of pa the, pa the pattern paper. So you'll need to then cut into your second piece of pattern paper. And you need a piece that is four inches by two inches. And that piece is to do this closure, this the sort of closure bit there. So it's that pattern piece that runs round um, under there. Then to go on top of that piece, you need a piece of cardstock. So again, the coordinating cardstock that you've used for your, um, your fan. So that's the fan bit that you're petal pink is going to be making um, so you need a piece to go over this bit here so you from there right then to there part of the closure you need a piece that is four inches by one and a quarter inches and so that will go there now what happens there is you will be putting a magnet there and then you'll be popping that over the top so it hides the magnet there. So that's those two pieces. Um, there, this is um, where I go, I do go uh, slightly different from Sam um, because I think on Sam's she used a piece that was um, one inch wide, I think by four inches. And then I will show you uh, later, but she wrapped, I think she wrapped it around the join here to hold this to fan together. But I'm going to show you my take on um, how I did it. I just find it a bit easier to hold it all together. Um, but you do need a piece of scrap that is straight and it's one inch wide. Um, so you probably wouldn't, you definitely don't need as much as that. So we're just going to cut a, a couple of ends off there. Um, but we'll, it definitely has to be one inch wide, your scrap of paper. So that's that piece there. And then um, there's your flowers that I cut out. So basically what we'll do is, is we'll hide the bits that, because that, 
it's a very odd shaped leaf if it was on its if it was left on its own. But if you tuck it behind the flower in a strategic way like that, and we put that on with glue dots, you're not going to see that it's an odd shape underneath. And then if we pop this one here, you can't see that there's a piece of green that shouldn't really be there. And I'll pop that one there. And then again, you can't see the piece of the bit of pink at the bottom. So you just will pop that right down there. And so we'll glue dot those onto that flower, to the back of that flower. And then we will be popping it onto this circle, which I'm going to cut out with my punch. Um, so we would put that on the flower actually on dimensionals, but all the leaves will be stuck to the back of the flower um, or onto the circle. But we'll, I'll, I'll show you to do that I'll, along the way. We'll show you how to do that. So I'll pop all this to one side. For this, you definitely will need um, either um, a scoreboard which I love my scoreboard. So I, on these sort of projects, I will always use my scoreboard. Um, I find it easier to work with. However, um, certainly I'm, I think a lot of trimmers, certainly stamping up trimmer, uh, you can get a, a scoring blade with it. So you don't have to have a scoreboard as well as a trimmer if you've got a, um, a scorer blade on your trimmer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our scoreboard and our 12 by 12 uh, piece of pattern paper, pop it in the scoreboard and push it right up to the top and the side and then um, you need your scorer. Now your scorer has a thinner end and a fatter. So for pattern paper I always use uh, the fatter end. It doesn't seem to put so much pressure on the paper because obviously the paper's thinner than cardstock. So the first thing we're going to do on, on the first side is we're going to score at five inches and seven inches. I just lightly go over that again. Don't put too much pressure on it. So then I'm going to rotate the paper round once and I'm going to score at two inches. Again, don't put too much pressure on it. And ten inches. After you've scored it at two inches and ten inches, you're going to come back in and you're going to score at one inch, but only down to the first score line. So just literally a one inch line, but just down to the first score line. Then you're going to go in at 11 inches, and again, just down to the first score line that you come to. Then you're going to rotate the paper right the way round and do exactly the same. So basically what you're doing is you are scoring, you're leaving this square here because that is going to be cut into, you don't need that to um, be scored. So basically these score lines that we're using here, the one inch ones, is what puts the bag in like that makes that um, process there. So I'll just go through that once more. So on the one side, the first side, you score at five inches and seven inches. Then you rotate it round and you score at two inches and ten inches. And then you come it all the way down to the bottom and then you come back in and exactly the same place. So you've got your two inch score line there. So you're coming in at one inch and you're scoring, but just to the first score line you come to and 11 inches and just to the score line you come to. Then turn the paper right round. 
also a bit down here. This is your score line you've just done, the one inch one. And then you're going to come in here at one inch straight down to the first score line and 11 down to the first score line. So that square there and that square there doesn't have a score line through it. So now what you do, all the long score lines, not those little short ones you've just done, but all the long ones. So you're going to fold that. You're going to fold that two inch one there. to do these two in the middle here those two in the middle there so you don't you don't fold those yet so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our scissors and you're going to go if you can see that score line there so you're going to cut straight down the other side so when you cut straight down just to that score line there and then that side of the score line again so it's literally just down to that so you've got that in effect but the the raised bit of score line is on this piece of paper here, on this little um, straight piece there. And you do exactly the same the other side. So you're going to go down the side to that score line, but not over it. And then down the side there. Again, to the score line, not over it. Then just for, to make it a bit easier, I just fold those in so you've just got those two bits there. So, what I do now is I just take a wedge, a little wedge out. So, you go in and then you just go down to the corner again, only to the score line. only to the score line so you've got a piece that looks like that and what I do I fold that down and then just cut those little wedges off there again just up to the score line so you've then got your cut so that now looks like that and the reason that you cut those pieces out is when you bring, so you, you bring that one up. So what you do is, so you bring the one up, this one up there, and glue that, and then this one back here. So that little piece, that little piece there, is hidden you can't see that anymore sometimes with boxes you would turn it in that way and turn it in that way like that but you would still see the little piece in there but I don't want to see that in there so I'm going to bring so what, what you do is you decide which so you put your pieces in like so. So you decide which side you want as the front piece. So whether it's that side or that side. I pretty. I quite like this one because it's got a few more leaves on it. So because I want this at the front, I will then bring this back one in first, this one up, and then this one back, so that your joins all your joins are going to be facing the back so all those there are facing backwards so you've only got nice seams at the front you haven't got any where you can see them at the back okay so 
I'm just going to go ahead now and cut into this side here. So now I've gone ahead and we have got our paper looks like that. So this is going to be the inside of the bag. This is what your outside of your bag is going to look. So now you're going to see that's where that one inch score line was, there and there. And your two inch one, there and there. So now what you're going to do is... So I decided that this is going to be my front. So I'm going to put some glue onto the, these flaps on the inside. So I'm going to fold this. I'm just going to bone fold this flatter. So I'm going to use my stamp and seal plus. So I'm just going to pop some there and there I'll pop a little bit at the bottom there a little bit at the top there I'm going to bring this piece I'll show you this way I'm going to bring this piece up because this is the back piece so it's sat in like that and I'm going to bring this piece up and attach it like that I'm going to do exactly the same the other side. Now, before we continue any further, I'm going to bring in those, I'm going to fold those score lines now. I do need them folded. Now I'm going to tape at the side there. I'm not going to put any at the middle as such because I will want that to um, push in so I'll show you. So now I'm going to bring this up I'm going to make sure that it's at the top there. So you haven't got a big overlap at the top. So to bring, so it's easy now, you've got this side done. So if you hold that, bring that up to your score line that's there. There, you've got it right up to the top in there. And then just pop that in there like that. So what you do then is it's where that score line was, you just tease that in like that. Because it's only really the top bits that... And then tease that in like that. You've got those like so. So it's only really the top bit that, although the score's right down, you want this to stay quite wide because you want your gifts to go in there. But So you're just squeezing the top like a clutch bag. So you've got the wider bit at the bottom. And then the this top bit here 
is what holds it closed. So you have got it opened at the top. So if you've got anything loose in there, you know, you'd wrap it in tissue um, or something uh, like that. So that's ready now for me to make the top. So I'm now going to bring in, uh, this is the closure band we're going to make now, the closure band here. So I'm just going to bring in, this was the four by two inches and the four by one and a quarter inches. And you also need two magnets. So these are the magnets. Uh, I think I get them from Amazon. It's the Magnet Expert and it's 15 millimeter diameter by one millimeter thick. So they're very thin. They don't, um, you know, they're not very bulky in your. Pull them away from each other. So first of all, I'm going to just pop that in there and I'm going to grab my glue dots. I just want to see which way round I want it. So that's going to go at the middle. Or oh, have it that way round. I'm going to have it that way round. So pull that in the middle there. So I'm going to grab my pokey tool and one of my magnets I'm going to pop so that you can see they're quite quite wi uh, wide so I'm going to put three three glue dots on there and I'm going to pop it so I'm going to pop it towards the bottom even as you can. Quarters. It's by three quarters. So I don't bring it right down to the edge because I want that to have enough room to actually go over it there. So then what I'll do is I will put some more glue dots on the top but I will also put tape down the whole width of that uh, double-sided tape just pop some maybe just pop one in the middle because we're going to have double-sided tape on here so I'll just pop that to the side in a minute so I'm going to get some double-sided tape and pop it right edge to edge. So, um, sorry about that, the video um, stopped. So basically, once um, I'd put the magnet on and I'd put the double-sided tape on this piece, you then cover the magnet. So the magnet's this end, you that it's the same each side here, and just pop it down, um, straight down the middle. So you cover the magnet and you go straight down the middle. And then this end away from the magnet so you get your corner punch and you corner punch the corners then this piece will be straight like that so then you um, manipulate it down so I always use my uh, fingers and thumbs first just to get some movement in the paper and the cardstock because you want it to have like a, a, a definite bend so the reason I do this is that it'll give it a nice shape. It'll give us a, a smooth bend round 
the paper, the cardstock and paper won't have any like definite bends in it um, or mark the paper. So then what you do is you get, you bring in your bag and you get the back of your bag and you measure. So the, the width of the bag is eight inches. So you want to put a pencil mark at four inches, which I've put mine there. And then from there, you want to just go down, measure down from the four inch mark, just down one and a half inches and put a mark there. This is your magnet end. You want the opposite end, the rounded corner ends. And you want to put it on that line there. But you want, so the edge of that paper to the edge of the box, you want, so that's three inches that side and three inches that side. So you've roughly, you've got this in the middle. So then what you do is, again, not the, the, the rounded end, you put some tape. What I did was I measured up from the bottom to just under one and a half so that I don't have any tape edging out. So, so I measured from the end just under one and a half inches and just put some um, double sided tape on the, on the back. So I'll really pull that back off so that I can then show you because this is when I realised that the video had stopped working. So then what you want to do is you want to bring it in. Don't put it straight on because you've got all this tape on. So you just guide it, guide it in. Just guiding that, like putting it down and just making sure that I've got three. Oh, <laughs> well that didn't go very well, did it? So I'm just going to guide it in. Just pop this here to make sure that I've got three which I have, so then I'm going to press that down. So that's your closure on the back. Um, the rounded edge is on the back of your bag and then this will eventually come round and will close your bag like so. So what you do there, try and lift this up so you can see. So put your ruler down. So you've got the edge to the edge, so it's eight. And then inside, you want to mark your four. So you've got the inside little bit. I think you might be able to just see the mark there. There's four. So then I'm going to have to do it this way. I'll try and see if I can. So you take your, you want two inches then. So from the edge of your paper, down inside the bag, and then you want to put mark a little mark in there you might not be able to see but so there's your four and then just there is your two inch because what you want to what you're going to do then is you're going to put your your other mag magnet inside there and then when that closes over that magnet is going to attach to it all you have to do is make sure that you've got your um, magnet, uh, you haven't got negatives in there because so what I suggest you do is just hold your magnet roughly at the tip, at the four little mark that you've made there. Bring your thing, your strap over so it's in place. That's not where you want it because you want it to go further down, but then you can push there, you can push your magnet where you want it to be like that so now it's in there in the place that you want it to be then you put your hand in and you hold the magnet in the place that you want it to be and then grab a glue dot still holding it where you know it should be 
hot when glue dot down. And now you know that you've got it in the right place. That is just probably the fiddliest bit of the of the bag, but it's just getting the magnet in the right place where you want it inside. So now you've got it stuck there. So yeah, it is a tiny bit fiddly, but if you just hold it at the top, bring this round so that it actually clips onto each other. And then by using this closure, you push this the closure down to how much you want it. Um, and then put a glue dot, just hold it in place while you take this off lay it down and then grab the glue dot stick it under there now we're not leaving it like that that wouldn't be safe <laughs> so we're just going to get a piece of the pattern paper so you remember that you had those um, little squares that you cut off the sides to make the bag so here here's one so if you cut that down to, I would suggest, um, what's it? I would suggest one and a quarter. So one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So you just need one. That will completely cover so what you do is is you'll put um, double-sided tape on this side because you want it to match the inside you don't want it to stand out so pop a piece there just make sure that that um, magnet stays in place so to bring my bag in and I just cover that there. And that's the cover. Um, you can't see it too well simply because um, it's the same pattern and we don't really want it to stand out. We want it to be a bit subtle and then when you close it it's closed your bag. So that is the next stage of the bag. We're now going to make the concertina bow. So we're going to bring our um, score board back in and our scorer and it's eight by eight so it doesn't matter which way round it goes it's all the same and then you're going to at this time because it's cardstock so it's a lot thicker and a lot sturdier we're going to use the smaller end um, if you remember we used the fatter end for the paper um, because it's a lot more delicate than the cardstock so what you're going to do is you are going to score every quarter of an inch so there's your quarter and then you're going three quarters then you're on one inch and you're literally going to do that all the way along until you get to until you get to eight so we're just coming up to um, the last one now so the last one will be seven and three quarters that you do. So now you have scored every quarter right the way along. Okay, so what we do is we fold these on each of the lines. So it's if you start it, because it's very narrow, you start it just by doing it along a little bit at a time and then bone folder it. Now because it's going to be a concertina fold, so in other words forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, 
I tend to like fold going this time I'll go back the other way so then I've got two like that and then I go back the other way then I find I don't get lost whether I'm supposed to be a, a mountain or a or a valley fold so I just keep turning mine over foam folder in it and then if you see that you've got your two mountains and there's your valley so there's your valley just coming so this one here has got to be a mountain then folder it like the other side that's the easiest way I have found to do it I mean everyone's going to have their own way of, of doing this it's not technical it's just to keep it up in its in its um, mountain valley mountain valley mountain valley all the way along so that you get this effect this is the way I find it easier but you know by all means go with your own your own way As I keep going, I, I then keep it um, in in the fold, in the concertina folds, um, because at the end then I've pretty much got it uh, the way I want it to be. Right, so here's what you will end up with. So. At this point, you have to uh, just make sure that you've got, um, so how we call a mountain and then a valley, a mountain, a valley, a mountain, a valley, all the way along. You haven't got a mountain and two valleys or you need to have a mountain, a valley, a mountain, a valley. So then, again, I do use my trusty grid paper, however, so I'm not everyone's going to have grid paper so it's eight inches wide and you want to be pulling that in so that the middle is the middle of there this is where this inch wide cardstock came in i just did it in a slightly different way from sam um because I find this quite fiddly to hold once it's all scrunched up. So um, I'll show you how I overcame that. So if you don't have grid paper, you have your ruler. You've got 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this one here is your middle one. And it's 8 wide. So 4 in the middle and if you go half an inch that way and make a mark and then four in the middle then and half an inch that way so that's the mark that you want your middle it does like to so maybe bring it in a little bit at a time so push that in there so there you've got your middle now what I did to hold that because I found it a bit tricky was I got sellotape from my husband's office and I just popped that round just to hold it in place so that is literally just helping to hold that in place whilst you see that's not gonna hold you know it's not doing anything fantastic apart from helping you at the moment to hold it in place so 
so then you can pull it out a little bit. So we'll just pop this to one side just for a moment. It's quite safe just for a little while because we need to just add this bit now. So this is where I cut the, these flowers and these leaves out and I'm just going to punch I think I'm going to so you need to do one and a half inch either punch or if you've got a, a round die then use that but I've got um, my punch here so I think I am going to go with the blue so I'm going to come in go in the centre back So now I've got that and then my flower is going to build up there, the leaves are going to pop out there and there and there and then that will go, that will, then I'm going to wrap tape, to double sided tape all the way around there. Um, now when Sam did hers she used um, hot glue I never get on very well with hot glue it's not um, uh, we don't mix really me and hot glue um, so I've done it this way so I've taped it just to secure it now I've punched out my circle now on the back of my so I think I'm going to because I've got this that I don't want seen Right, so I'm going to put my glue dots on the back of the flower. Doesn't matter how many you use, it's, we have to just see. I put some all over simply because at the moment I'm not quite sure where we need to put the leaves to hide the bits we don't want seen. So I put a glue dot on each of the petals. There, and I just put one in the middle as well. There. So now if I turn my flower over, I can see that I want that bit like that. And then you can't see. Put there. And that bit in there. And I'll quickly put this one. that bit down there now you can't see any of that then I'm going to come in actually I'll just pop another glue dot on there just to keep it in its place and I'll come in with my dimensional I want to just pop one in the centre I think I might Careful that way, and one that way, and that's just really to hold. So when we pop them in there, there's no dips in it. Then I'm going to just take the backs off these, pop it on there. Now that will go on the centre of there in a moment. But now I'm going to get my beefy double sided tape and wrap it right round I'm going to pop that up there so I don't want that sticking onto there I'm just going to get another line here that's got a lot of double sided tape on it so that's the back because that's where these point out that way so we want that on the back now this is where mine went slightly different from Sam's as well because Sam would then I think she took this piece 
and wrapped it right round, but I found it made it quite bulky. So first of all, so just on the closure, I put a line of tape. on here so that's right up to there so when that closes down there you have your bow like so and then you're going to come in with your so I'm going to put extra tape on here as well, just to doubly make sure. So let's just put a line. So just put a line on there. At the moment, I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Open this up a little bit. I lift that off there and just push that down so that's firm on there. And then these little pieces here, because I didn't wrap uh, that tape as exposed there, because I didn't wrap this right round and make it, I felt it was making it a bit too bulky. So I've still got my inch width, then I'm just going to get some sharp scissors and just cut probably a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna pop that down inside there over that tape. So that it covers up the tape and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the bottom piece there. There is your little bag. You can always continue to um, pull these open a little bit more um, as you want to. So there's your two little pretty bags there. You could actually just finish it off with a bit of sparkle. I do like my sparkle. nice sparkle in the middle these basic um, jewel rhinestones a nice big one in the middle of there there oh it's pretty it's funny isn't it how a bit of sparkle makes it pin just put one in this one as well now So here's the finished, this is the finished bag, um, this is the one I made before, so we've got both those papers are from the free uh, pack, um, so actually relatively um, 
cheap gift bag to make. So to get your free paper, you just need to spend £45 on any of any other product. And um, you can get to choose uh, this paper. There are other papers. There's also stamp sets um, that you can choose from. So um, it isn't just paper, but I just thought this beautiful bag would show off the paper uh, so well and it also meant with this um, this paper because it's got flowers that you can cut out one over there. because it's got flowers that you can cut out um, and it's got the circles that you can punch out um, you don't actually need to do any stamping no inks required all you need is um, a scoreboard, some sharp scissors and um, cardstock, this cardstock, but you don't need any ink. But do go and see um, Sam at Mixed Up Crafts, her her video for the same the same bag, although uh, Sam had this uh, the sides open. I decided to keep mine closed uh, in so nothing's going to roll out um, of the bag. Um, it's such a good size bag, um, you know, you could get a small uh, scarf in there, wrap it in some tissue and pop it in there, some gloves, um, makeup. It, it's a very good size bag and I'm sure anybody uh, you give that to will really appreciate it and probably just keep it because it's as a decoration it's lovely uh, to look at as well so I hope you've enjoyed um, watching this video and um, I hope you make uh, make a bag of your own uh, it'd be lovely to see what what you've come up with and um, so thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed the video it would be fabulous if you could subscribe to my channel um, and like the project. So thanks very much again and I'll see you next time.